Hello everyone, welcome to this video discussion. My topic is business letter and the different formats used in business letter writing. So in this video discussion, I will discuss comprehensively what business letters are and I shall also introduce you to the different formats used when writing business letters in the corporate world. Before anything else, it is very important that we understand what business letters are. So what is a business letter? It is usually a letter from one company to another or between such organizations and their customers, clients, and other external parties. The common misconception is that a business letter is written only within a company. No, a business letter can be a letter sent to another company. So let's say a letter from company A to be sent to company B. Okay, a business letter also plays an important role, for example, between company and client relationship. So a business letter can also be used in channeling or relaying important, or let's say sometimes confidential information to the client and vice versa. It's also very vital that we understand the purpose for writing a business letter. So here are the different purposes. First one is to request direct information or action from another party. One good example for this is when you ask, let's say, the requirements to qualify for a loan application in a bank. So if you are a client or a customer, then most likely you will be asked to write a business letter, specifically a letter of inquiry, asking for specific information as regards the different requirements that need to be submitted prior to a successful loan application or request. Another one is when you would like to order supplies from a supplier. So this one is a supply request or a request letter or an order letter. Okay? So if you would like to order, let's say, uh, a number of items or a number of products from a company, then you, are, you can write a business letter for this purpose. Another one is to point out a mistake with a letter's recipient. Okay, so if you happen to receive a letter and then you check it and then saw a lot of mistakes in it specifically on um, the accuracy of the information indicated therein, then you can write a business letter as a response or as a way of asking for the correct pieces of information. Or you can also write a business letter to reply directly to a request or maybe to simply apologize for a wrong service or a bad service and to convey goodwill. For example, you would like to express your gratitude to company A for their support extended to you during a certain event. So you can also write a business letter to express your thanks or your gratitude towards that company. Now, we need to remember the three key elements when writing a business letter. First one is to create a good opener. In any business letter, it is very vital that we know how to catch the attention of our audience. That is why the introduction plays an important role because it actually gives a positive impression to your readers. If your introduction is strong enough or is captivating enough, then most likely your readers will really be enticed to read the totality of the letter. Introductory paragraphs should catch both readers' attention and interest. This is to make sure that the reader will really read the entirety of your letter. So a good introduction can be an inviting introduction as well. Second one is to make sure that you are sending the right message. Choosing the accurate or correct words when phrasing your ideas is very crucial. So that means it's very important that you know not only the manner, but also the content of the message you are channeling towards your audience. So in this case, you need to use simple, direct and tactful language to facilitate understanding. Avoid complex vocabulary because the tendency is that you might not be easily understood by your recipients. Also, avoid overcrowding your letters with jargons because definitely jargons cannot help a person easily understand the contents of your letter, except in cases where the recipient is really an expert of that field and has enough knowledge of the jargons that you used in your letter. You also need to organize your language correctly and concisely. So you need to observe grammar of the English language and also correct mechanics. And then, as mentioned, you need to construct sentences correctly and give accurate and precise information in your letter. 
And most importantly, you need to write clearly and logically, making sure that your ideas have been arranged systematically for easy following or easy understanding of the concepts. The third one is giving a friendly closing. Now, if you have started your introduction as a strong intro, you can also make it sure that your conclusion or the conclusive remark of your letter is something that is friendly, polite, or sincere. You have to give the reader a pleasant thought in the last paragraph of your letter. So in short, the conclusion part of your letter must something that will also create a mark or an imprint in the heart of your audience or readers. So this time, allow me to discuss to you the different parts of a business letter. Since we have already tackled the different qualities that must be observed when writing a business letter, this time it is important to be knowledgeable of the different or about the different parts of a business letter. So I'm going to do a quick run through of the different parts because I'm pretty sure you have had already this encountered in your maybe high school or um, in your other subjects, okay, or in your previous um, technical writing classes. First one is that there has to be a heading. So when writing a letter, you have to make sure that you have the header or the heading, okay. So for business letters, it is important that your heading contains the company logo, if there is any, and then other company details, such as the company name, company address, and contact details, such as telephone number and email address. Through this, the heading will provide you or will provide your readers pieces of accurate information, which will also help them, most especially when they wish to respond or reply to your business letter. So after the heading, you will have to write the date, and then after it, you'll have to write the inside address. So the inside address is the part of the letter which contains the details of the receiver or the recipient of the letter. So in letter writing, we follow the four-line rule. So the first line in the inside address contains the complete name with a designation, I mean the civil title of that person. For example, Juan de la Cruz, PhD, all written in capital letters and bold-faced. And then second line must contain the position okay, of the person or the recipient. Third line must indicate the company name. And then the fourth line must be allotted to naming the company address. Okay? And then after you're done with inside address, we proceed now to the next part, which is the salutation. So examples of salutation are, Dear Mrs. Cruz or Mrs. Cruz. Okay, these are two examples of a salutation or a manner um, on how salutation is written. And then, of course, you have the, the body or the text of your letters. This is the major content now of your letter. This is where the um, ideas or the messages you are trying to convey can be found. And then you also have the complementary close or complementary closing. So after you are done with the body or the text of your mess of your letter, you need to proceed to writing the complementary close, which is usually in a form of respectfully yours, sincerely yours, very truly yours, or truly yours. These are four examples only of a complementary close. And then, of course, do not forget to affix your signature when writing business letters. So below your signature, you have to indicate there your name and the company you are representing. And then we also have the enclosure. Let's say in the business letter that you submitted, you enclose there a copy of the proposal. So you can actually include this one at the bottom portion of your business letter by writing the E, capital letter E, and then small letters N and C. E and C, which stands for enclosure, and then colon, and then you can indicate there the specific document that you have attached with your business letter. Let's say um, proposal or copy of the proposal. So you have to clearly indicate that one in the enclosure portion. So here are some examples of the letter formats, but later on I'll be showing you um, more examples of this with text okay, found in the letter. So just to give you an idea, um, ideally there are three styles that you can use when writing business letters. But now we already have hybrid formats that we can use when writing um, business letters effectively. So based on the slide, we have here modified block style, block style, and semi-block style. So some reminders in business letter writing. First one, for corporate letters, always use the appropriate letterhead with correct and updated details. So in this case, make sure that your logo is printed correctly with the right colors, 
Okay? And then you also have to double check should there be some updates or changes with your um, company email address or company contact number, then you have to um, update them as soon as possible because the next time that you send a letter with that letterhead, the recipient would usually look at it should they wish to send a response or a reply to your letter. And then the recipient's name in the inside address and send this name in the signature line must be in boldface all capital letters. So if you look at this one, this is the inside address I discussed a while ago. So you have here the complete name all written in capital letters and then in boldface. And then the position for the second line, third line is for the company and then the last line is for the complete company address. When writing a letter also, avoid the use of a comma after the salutation. For example, dear Mrs. Cruz, comma. That is a big no-no when writing business letters. In writing business letters, you need to use a colon instead because a colon symbolizes authority and respect. Okay? So the colon there will serve as the most appropriate punctuation that you can use after a salutation. And then do not forget that when you write the message or the content of your letter, start with a greeting statement because this will also set the mood of the reader. So you have to start with a greeting statement and make sure that it is polite enough or it is inviting enough for the reader to really go through or read the, the entirety of the letter. Do not also forget to affix your signature on the signature line. And then do not forget to indicate contact details when very necessary. For example, when you write um, letters which will need um, immediate responses, then do not forget to indicate contact details. Okay. In writing letters, we also need to avoid deadwood expressions. So deadwood expressions are those expressions that make our letters long and complicated. So as mentioned a while ago, I already um, gave you some samples for deadwood expressions, but I'd like to elaborate more on this so that you will have a 360 degree look at how the deadwood expressions could damage the quality of your sentences or statements. So here are some examples of um, deadwood phrases which we can actually simplify to make sure that we observe conciseness. For example, instead of saying a majority of, why not simply say most? A sufficient amount of enough, a sufficient amount of, simply say enough, add an additional, that's redundant, simply say add a what? Okay, an additional what? Advanced planning, because planning is already advanced by nature, Advanced warning, same case as with planning. After the conclusion of, conclusion usually have or conclusion really happens after something. As a matter of fact, as a means of, you can remove this one and simply exchange it with the word to to make the statement briefer. At a later date, simply say later, at the present time, simply say now, at this point in time, now, by means of, and then you also have their other examples for deadwood phrases. And then you can also see here it's equivalent. Okay, what's the correct one? For example, we do not say current trend in letters because trend is already at the current time. So there's no need for us to make it redundant by doubling the word which, have, uh, which has the same effect as the other one. So simply say trend. Okay? And then more examples. Um, among these, I'd like to emphasize more on in order and in order to. I'm not really a fan of using this expression. So when you write your letters, please avoid them so that you can really achieve conciseness, okay? Common mistakes, we need to be direct to the point. Okay? You can simply say we need to be direct or we need to go to the point. Okay? In my personal opinion, opinion is already personal, so simply say in my opinion. This will enable us to become stronger. Why not simply say this will make us stronger, okay? This is imperative for me to be able to reach my goal, the statement to be able to. Why not simply say this is imperative for me to reach my goals? I can consider him as the most outstanding speaker. Outstanding is already superlative by nature, so you can get rid of most and simply say outstanding speaker. We can visit them tomorrow at 9 a.m. in the morning. There's no 9 a.m. in the evening, so you can get rid of in the morning. Let us go and look for an ATM machine. The M in ATM already means machine. So when you use ATM machine, that means it's automated teller machine machine. Now, there's a redundancy in this. My greetings go to each and every, so avoid doubling this one and mentioning each and every or each and every one. This is a big no-no also in letter writing. It was an emergency situation, so I had to be late. 
emergency is already a situation. There's no need to mention it's a situation. People need to enter in the rooms, okay? And let us evaluate the final outcome. Now, for this one, please need, uh, people need to enter in the rooms because you can actually remove the in here and simply say to enter the rooms, right? And then let us evaluate the final outcome. When you say outcome, it's already final. So it's already correct. Okay, other examples you can see here on the screen, first and foremost, okay, get rid of that, future plans, and then gather together. Gathering means being together already. So avoid redundancy. Let us all bow down. When you bow, you're really going or moving your head downwards, right? So you simply say, let us all bow. I believe this is a new innovation. Innovation is something new. So you can say, I believe this is an, an innovation. During the period of time, you simply say during that period or during that time. At the present time we are experiencing, you may remove present here because the verb use is are, which is definitely singular. It, or which is definitely a verb used at the present time, okay? It still remains to be a problematic aspect of the company. You use still, so meaning it remains, okay? So again, we need to avoid these common mistakes or these deadwood expressions when writing letters because definitely they do not contribute anything to the betterment of the quality of the paper, okay? This time, allow me to show you some examples of the different letter formats that we use okay, in business letter writing. So allow me to share my screen. So I have here sample letters. Let me start with sample block letter format. So if it is a block letter format, you can see here this one. Okay. So if you notice, it's, it, it, look like, it looks like a full block format. It's just that we have here the subject. Okay. So we have here the, the header. Okay. We have the date line. And then we also have here the inside address, which follows the four line rule. And then we have here the salutation and then the subject, okay? The main content of your letter. And then you have here the message and then you have here the, this one, salut, uh, the complementary close and then we have the signature line, okay? And then CC here means carbon copy. Okay, so if you want to furnish another office or another person with a copy of this letter, you can just indicate here CC and the name of the recipient or the name of the office. So that is basically sample block letter format. This time, let's take a look at sample full block. Okay? So for sample full block format, if you notice, the only thing that is not present here is the subject line. So we don't put a subject line anymore. Right after the inside address, you have here the, salut uh, the salutation. Okay, and then the same parts are present. So that is full block. And the next one we have hanging indented letter. So this is an example of a hanging indented letter. So if you notice, the date is at this side, and then inside address, complementary um, salutation rather, and then the greetings, and then we have here the body of the letter. So if you notice, supposedly the first line is the line in the, the paragraph that needs to be, yeah, that needs to be. Um, indented. However, in this case, it is actually the succeeding lines um, from the first line which are um, indented. Okay, so this is hanging indented. And then um, complementary close in the signature line are found here at the right hand bottommost part of the paper. So that sample hanging indented. This time let's talk about modified block letter format. Okay, so for the modified block letter, the date is still the, uh, here. And then we have here the, the inside address and then the name, okay, and then this one. So ang pinagkaiba niya lang sa full block format is the fact that if you look at this one, the date is here and then the signature line and the complementary close are here, okay? In a full block format, the rest of the parts of the letter are all flush to the left-hand side of the letter. So that is modified block letter. Next one, let's have the modified, this one, semi-block letter format. 
So you can see here this one. So the date is here and then the inside address, the salutation, and then we have here the subject line, but it's not labeled actually subject. So it looks like a title for a letter. And then you have here the message contents and then here the complementary close and then the signature line. Okay. So that is sample uh, modified semi-block. And then we have here the last one, which is the simplified letter format. Okay. Take a look at this one. In a simplified letter format, here everything is written. It looks like a full block format. The only part or letter part that is missing is the salutation here. Okay. So we don't put a salutation here anymore because this one is really simplified, although this is the only portion um, removed from the original full block format. So those are the different letter formats that uh, we use when writing letters. Now, one thing that we need to remember is that when writing letters, you need to choose first the letter format that you are to use. Now, if you were to ask me what standard format is to be used when writing letters, it really depends on the company or the institution. Because there are, or most institutions use the full block format while, use, uh, while others um, use other formats in their offices or in their departments. There are also situations wherein departments within the company differ in terms of the form or letter format used when writing business letters. So again, it's very important that you know what letter format has to be followed when writing your business letters. And second one, you also have to identify who the audience will be. And then make sure that you avoid any form of dead wound or gobbledygook expressions so that when your letters are to be read by the recipients, they will not experience any form of confusion in understanding the message content. Okay? So I hope this video discussion helped you fully understand how letters are made and also made you aware of the very essence why we need to write business letters. So if you have questions about this video discussion, can you post them as a comment or please post them in the open forum. Thank you very much for listening and thank you for watching my video.